support our brother, give him a big hand clap. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so uh, the Detroit 15 campaign is an extension of the National Fight for 15 uh, movement. It is a uh, economic and social movement in this country that has been going on uh, for a little over two years now, almost three years. It started in Detroit, which was the fourth city to join the fight in March of 2013. And uh, the first strike that happened in Detroit was in May of 2013. Um, and uh, one of the tools of the campaign is striking uh, particularly fast food, but as the campaign has moved on, low-wage retail and low-wage employers, such as uh, child care, home care workers, um, retail like Dollar General and, 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 um, and, and big chain stores that have money, but, but generally uh, pay uh, a little bit of money to their workers. Um, but, the, but the focus of the campaign since it started has been fast food. Um, the, uh, the, the, the goal of the campaign is, is a, a unionizing movement. The goal of the campaign is to move workers from a little bit of money, uh, $8.15 an hour right now, to uh, around $15 an hour. With the restructuring of, uh, of a corporate contract with McDonald's, and its franchisees. So basically what we're saying is McDonald's has the money to pay people. They're a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, every, um, every employer in the country so far that, that has been affected by this, like McDonald's, TJ Maxx, Target, uh, Walmart, have uh, given raises and have done so without a union coming in, but have done so because of the work that workers have done coming out and saying that they're, they're worth more. Um, you know. When we look at what the minimum wage is adjusted for inflation, workers are behind uh, worse than ever. The average worker uh, who works in minimum wage uh, is, you know, also on public benefits, food stamps, you know, some type of welfare, and the campaign considers that a form of a subsidy. So why should we pay corporations subsidies when they could pay their workers and get them off of the public dollar? It just doesn't make sense. So the math is there. The reasons are there. There should be dignity in work, and that's kind of what uh, we feel as a campaign, but that's what workers feel. The workers lead this campaign. And so there should be dignity in work. There should be, you know, a procedure when someone gets hurt. You know, right now there's a story, and you can Google this, where uh, there's, someone got burned at a, at a McDonald's, and the manager told them to put mustard on it. Like, that's not, that's not a procedure. You know, but that is the type of uh, that is the type of obstacle workers face. So, um, as of lately, uh, we've been uh, talking to students, particularly at Wayne State, but University of Michigan, University of Michigan, Dearborn, Eastern Michigan, uh, all the way out into uh, it's on the west side of the state, Grand Valley. Grand Valley. Yeah, Grand Valley University. Uh, we've been talking to students. Students have been engaging, and uh, and and they and they see the the uh, the need for a raise in the wage floor. Um, one of the things that that we know is that fast food, low wage, minimum wage jobs are the fastest growing jobs in the economy. Like these jobs are growing at a rate faster than any other job, and they are the least profitable jobs. So <clears throat> you cannot have a healthy economy on you know, minimum wage jobs. 70% of our economy is consumer spending. So if people don't have the money to spend and engage productively in our economy, then we can, we, we can never really have a true recovery. Like that recovery starts when people get the money to spend. And so um, we've engaged with that topic uh, with students who've also raised the point that, you know, if the wage floor is suppressed when they come out, um, and they're coupled with debt, they're closer than ever. Some of these students are closer than their parents have ever been, closer than they've ever been to poverty uh, before, coupled with that debt. And it's a scary thing for a lot of students. We have a, a student right now who's uh, 24 years old, been at Wayne State for about six years trying to finish her psychology degree, has had to work um, to support herself and her son. And, um, and she knows all of the uh, all of the obstacles that face her, you know, trying to complete school, but then also once she finishes, what is what's going to happen if she had to pay 
for school, a lot of her school with loans, and then come out and, and not make much above 35, 30,000 a year. It's gonna be extremely hard for her to, uh, to enter that next phase of her life. Uh, so there are, some, there are some talking points I wanted to go over. I, I printed them out and <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's something else. But I know um, since, the, since the fight for 15 has started, um, we have become uh, the new standard in America. Everybody um, generally associates us with $15 an hour minimum wage, which is great. But once again, um, the, the feeling that we have and that workers have is um, the minimum wage can go up and the cost of living can surpass it once again and it, it could just stagnate. So the best way um, to keep workers enfranchised, to keep uh, wages uh, up with the cost of inflation is to have a union. Um, it's the first social movement and uh, economic union movement since probably uh, the 60s, since Martin Luther King, or the 50s, since Martin Luther King was, uh, was organizing and, uh, and telling workers uh, the benefits of unionization and the benefits of actually um, controlling uh, or bargaining at work. Um, you know, people like Hillary uh, Clinton, President Obama and Mrs. Obama uh, have all um, endorsed the campaign. The NAACP has endorsed the campaign. Um, we have, uh, there's been a lawsuit filed, um, and it's a national wage and hour lawsuit against McDonald's that is currently being litigated. There are also a couple things that have happened. The NLRB, which is the National Labor Relations Board, has uh, named McDonald's co-employer uh, with its franchises. So that means that you know the, this billion dollar company has a responsibility to uh, to at least take some type of ownership over what happens in their stores. And before, and, and that's a pretty big thing. Before uh, corporate McDonald's had was wiping its hands of the whole thing and saying that you know it's not our problem. Like whatever goes on in our franchises, we don't control. And that's not true. Like they control pretty much everything from merchandising to branding to where the franchise is and who gets the franchise, you know, to cups, napkins, paper towels, like the corpor the corporation controls all of that. So they can certainly make decisions about who hires and fires and they can certainly make decisions about wages. It's just untrue. And uh, recently the corporation, the corporate McDonald's gave uh, its workers, I think a dollar raise and they're, and they're planning on moving up to 10, 10, but that's uh, that's just the corporation. So that's about 10% of its stores. Uh, the other 90% are left to fend for themselves. So it's not really a it's not really a win uh, when you look at it for the majority of people who work in McDonald's. Um, there's been a major lawsuit uh, in uh, Brazil that alleges that uh, McDonald's uh, has numerous uh, labor violations in that country and is just racking up on labor violations. So the Brazilian government has uh, taken action. And uh, in Europe, um, there are there's an investigation um, into how much McDonald's, owe, McDonald's owes, uh, I think, France, Italy, Spain, and the United Kingdom in taxes. And, and in some estimates, it's up to $2 billion. So um, these are all things that McDonald's does abroad. But we, we are here to kind of spotlight what McDonald's and the rest of the industry, because McDonald's sets the pace in the fast food industry. Um, and they kind of set the pace in the low wage industry, along with the uh, other people like Walmart. Um, so we are holding a rally tomorrow, and uh, I know the, the flyer says Peck Park, but that has actually been changed to uh, parking lot number 11, where, where we'll begin staging at Wayne State, which is on Cass and Antoinette. Um, I assume parking may be difficult, so what I did was I brought uh, a map and cross streets of our staging locations, and if it's easier to get to a staging location, then we urge you to just get to a staging location and park, and we can actually uh, provide transportation to and from the rally. Um, the rally will be at, uh, the staging will begin at 5.30, the rally will begin promptly at 6, um, and it will go until about 8 o'clock and then we'll all go home and, and have a great time. But at the rally, uh, we plan on uh, being really raucous. It's kind of what we do. We um, draw attention and we bring the drama to an issue uh, that needs, that needs uh, a voice. Because, you know, uh, the Michigan League of Public Policy and 
uh, the transportation issue is very important. And part of the reason it's important is because people don't have money. They don't have the interconnectivity to get cars, to get to work, to you know make their lives uh, more productive. And the people that are working in the city uh, predominantly work either in healthcare, and it's not at a hospital, it's at like mostly home healthcare, or it's at a fast food restaurant. And they're not able to make the wages that they need to, uh, to, to have a, 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 a sustainable life. And so what we're saying is these, these issues are interconnected. When you pay people more, they're able to do more. They're able to access more. And they're able to access either public transportation at a higher rate or even buy cars at some sometimes. But uh, with the suppressed wage floor, you know, the problems will persist. The problems will persist. We cannot have a healthy economy with the suppressed wage floor. It is basic economics. Thank you very much.